Welcome to the Modern Surgeon Knot Tying Tutorial. In this video, we really want to teach you how to understand knots in addition to just rote memorizing your finger positions when you're tying a knot. If you truly understand the purpose of each movement, then you can be more versatile when you're applying these lessons in the OR. First of all, instead of teaching you uh, something on a suture board, I want you to think about what you do every single day when you tie a knot. Simply put, you're creating a loop using a thread and then passing one of the tails through that loop and around the other suture in order to create what we conventionally refer to as a knot. Tying a knot in a surgical setting is no different from what I just described, except surgeons have discovered ways to make their hand motions more efficient over time. For instance, when I'm tying a knot inside the body, and this specific example is a one-handed knot, I'm still creating a loop in between the two threads and then finding a way to efficiently pass the tail through the center of that loop, which creates the same knot that I described earlier. Now we're going to go into the specific steps that go into tying a knot. This example is a one-handed knot, meaning that whichever hand you choose, that hand is carrying out all the major acts in tying that knot. I'm going to be using my left hand. Now when you're trying to create a loop, you need to understand that there has to be a crossing point between the two sutures. So for instance, when you create this loop, these two threads have to cross. Now there are two main ways of creating that loop. One, you take your hand and then you come across the top and therefore use your index finger to pass through that loop. The other approach is to come from the bottom and then create a loop by using your third and fourth finger to come through that loop. In either approach, what you're doing is the same, except either you're choosing to come from the top or the bottom using different fingers. If you're coming from the top with your index finger, that's called a forehand. If you're coming from the bottom with your middle and ring finger, that's called a backhand. Now in this instance, we've created a loop from a backhand approach. Once you're able to set up the loop and you have your fingers that are going through the loop, the rest of it is very straightforward. All you have to do is think about pulling this tail through that loop using the two fingers that are inside of that loop. So the motion for the backhand is you bend those fingers, you grab that tail, and then you rotate your wrist out as you're pulling the suture through. To show you that motion again, you created a loop, you have your two fingers that grab the tail and then pull it out through that loop. Doing the forehand is the exact same concept. So once you've set up the loop using your index finger, you have to think about pulling this tail through the loop using that index finger. The way we accomplish that is by curling your index finger around the tail and flicking it out through that loop. I'm going to show you again how that goes. You create the loop, you take your index finger, you curl it around the tail, and then you pull it through the loop. Now that you understand the concept of a knot, the same principle applies to whether you're using your left hand or your right hand, whether you're doing a one-handed knot, a two-handed knot, or even an instrument tie. Some common mistakes that we see include holding the suture too far away so the tails left at the end are too short, or alternatively holding the sutures too low so there is not enough room to tie. Another mistake we often see is people forgetting that forehands must cross over the top while backhands must cross below. Another common mistake is having your fingers exit the loop when trying to pass the tail through the loop. Hopefully being aware of these mistakes will help you be able to avoid them in the future. Now one last nuance that I want to mention before the end of this video is that when you're first starting out your knot, you want to have your threads be crossed. Whichever hand you're tying with, if that thread is at the top, then you want to start with the forehand to create the loop. If that thread is on the bottom, then you want to come in with the backhand to create the loop. This is because when you move your hand across to create the loop, this ends up uncrossing the suture. In our next several videos, we will go into more detail about not tying.